Good afternoon, Cindy Phillips. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. We're really live now. Isn't that fun? It's very fun. Very, very, very fun. How are you doing? Everything good? Oh, man, everything's good. I'm out here at the front porch of the Texas Hill Country, and we have got Texas wildflowers three and a half feet high. Oh, it's, like, it's like, it's, and uh, so you guys know, uh, Cindy's like North San Antonio. I'm Southwest Austin. So we're like an hour apart probably, but we, yeah. we really see each other because it's like <laughs> digital world, but um, it's, it's beautiful time. weather down here right now. Like for us here uh, in Austin, it is currently 84 degrees. So beautiful, beautiful day. I uh, got some personal stuff I'm doing today. In fact, uh, doing some really cool stuff with my wife for her business. So that's kind of fun. Uh, so I'm not going to see you in this afternoon's calls, but I'm going to get to see you right now. I'll tell you about the rest of that on the back end. But we have a really cool uh, live presentation training for you guys today. We're going to have our entire large group, our IT and MSP business owners group, over 20,000 with us. Uh, along with our clients group. And then we got our YouTube community, our LinkedIn community. Everybody's watching with us live here. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Cindy, what are we going to talk about today? So today we're going to break down the first time appointment. And if you were here with us like, like a week ago, God, was it just a week ago? That was a week ago. Yeah, it's hard to believe. <laughs> just a week ago, we broke down the whole sales process. And for us, it starts with a first time appointment. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into that first time appointment and we're going to break it down. Um, we're going to break it down because it's a key part of what we call running the play. We have a sales process that runs like a sales machine, like an engine. We treat everybody. Oh my God. Yes. Chris is standing up with the run the play shirt on. I was worried there for a minute, but that's okay. <laughs> so, you, you know me well enough to be like, oh shoot, what's he doing? I know you well enough to think, oh my God, what's he going to do next? But anyway, when we run the play, the whole idea behind running the play is that we do the same things over and over again. And one of the reasons I love working with Chris is because we both like sports. And I played softball and coached Little League. And Chris, factoid, do you know what my first job was? Oh, God. Umpiring little girls' oh, softball games. I, I was an umpire of softball and baseball too. So I also was See? a basketball coach. I was a basketball referee. I was a football coach. I was a football referee. Uh, still play various sports to this day. I uh, was in the gym this morning. So like active, uh, even at 46 I, years old. So I did my five miles on my on my bike this morning. So there you girl. Go. I love it. I love it. I love so, it. Um, but anyway, because we we like sports, we both like sports so much that what we do is we break down our sales process so it's really easy for you to build confidence every single step of the way. That's the why behind what we do. And so we're going to take about the next hour, Chris, if it's okay with you, we're going to take yep. the next hour yep. and we're just going to dive into it. But before we get started, you know, there might be people on this call that don't know who we are. Yeah, I got a couple quick things too. And one thing I'll say, just like kind of following up on what you just stated with the consistency and all that. Most MSPs, a note guys, Cindy was never an MSP owner. She kind of worked inside of one and in, in, in the franchise world a little bit, but I was an MSP owner. Most of our, a good chunk of our staff worked at MSPs or were at MS, or MSP owners. Most MSPs come up with this, I'm a really good technician or technical aspect person, but rarely are they taught about business. So our job in, at Seven Figure MSP is to act, absolutely teach and train how to do the sales marketing business side. Now, obviously the cybersecurity stack and the technical aspect still comes into play, but it's more important. Like I understand, and I get a lot of kicks, Cindy, I know you see this because we get a lot of kickback about, oh, so you're teaching us not to be good MSPs or, or to scam our clients or to rip. No, we're teaching you how to focus on what you're not good at, which is we are, you know, I'll say this out of all of the MSPs I've ever met, the amount of crappy or bad intentioned MSPs I've run into, I can, in fact, are less than five, I would say. Would you agree? Disagree? Oh, yeah. with that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's an industry of people who care. Who care? Yep. And, and they, they do their best. In fact, I'll say they care so much, they care too much because they give their stuff away with abandon on the service side, which oftentimes puts you in this world of transactional commoditization. So we have a lot of things that happen. So we're going to focus on that before we get into Cindy's training for today. Just a couple housekeeping items. We are going to be doing a drawing, a live drawing on this broadcast today. We're going to give away two $100 Amazon gift cards. We're going to do a live drawing. We've got our little wheel of names that we're going to do. We're going to spin that real time. Uh, second thing is I want to just 
talk about our next event. Uh, we just came out of about two weeks ago, our live event in Nashville. It was absolutely amazing. It was called Amp Up Your MSP and the whole concept was around music and all these cool things. We were at Dirk Bentley's Whiskey Row and all this cool stuff. We had Chris Foss there. Uh, Cindy, oh, I didn't even realize, you, where'd you get, did, did Amanda send you a care package by any chance? Yes, I got a book. Oh, but the coolest thing I got, Chris, was I got for first time ever a metal guitar pick. Ooh. Yeah, those are cool. They're, was, they're really cool. That was cool. As, thrilling, as thrilling as the book. Yep. Okay. So we have a lot of stuff going on, but uh, we're going to be in Chicago for our next one. That's going to be August 15th, 16th, and 17th. We got some amazing stuff coming. Uh, we're going to be doing a full uh, Wrigley Field experience uh, on Wednesday, the 16th of August. So that's actually going to be at the Wrigley View rooftops. So we got all kinds of cool stuff coming and it's going to be really, really great. It's near O'Hare at the Rosemont Hilton. So very excited about all that. You guys can register right now. That's there for you uh, at live.sevenfiguremsp.com. So Cindy, that being said, you want me to share your screen? I'm good to go? Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. Share let me get that, let me get that up there and I will let you take it away. Okay. So hopefully you're here because you want to scale your business and grow and you want to make 2023 your best year ever. It's not too late. We still have six months left. There's a lot we can do. And so over the next three or uh, next couple of weeks, I'll be talking about some more things that might be of interest to you. But today we're going to drill into the first time appointment. Next week, I'm going to drill into how to handle sales objections. And then the final week, we're going to talk about why your service offer matters and why good, better, and best isn't cutting it anymore. Okay. And how to pivot. So today, all about first time appointments. So let's go. Let's go get into the first time appointment. So the first thing that has to happen, and you guys have probably heard this before, but you've got marketing efforts. Now, actually, this is a funny story, Chris. I one time, uh, I surveyed a bunch of MSPs and I asked them how much money they were actually spending to generate leads in marketing. And the number was so small. I know that most of our listeners today have a bigger beer budget than what a lot of people spend on marketing. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason you do marketing is to develop something called a marketing qualified lead. And those leads kind of go into your CRM system. And then somebody on the sales team, usually it's you, the business owner, has to say, okay, now I've got to engage with these people. So what we've got to do first, before we go out to see somebody on a first time appointment, we need to do some due diligence. We need to do some research. We need to know who is the business owner and who are their management team members. Now, most MSPs want to be selling to that sweet spot, Chris, of 20 employees. You can't manage 20 employees. Am I right? You've got to have a management team. So when you go for a business that's going to fit your sweet spot, there are going to be other people involved in the decision-making process. And so you want to know not only who's the business owner, but who are the management team members. Okay? Go out, read their LinkedIn, read their Facebook. Do the Google My Business page, right? Read the reviews and whatever you do, go to Glassdoor. Go to Glassdoor and see what people are saying about the business. And then when you go through their LinkedIn profiles, I want you to see what organizations they're members of and who they follow. We want to know where they hang out. Where do they get their proverbial um, you know, internet beer, right? What are they reading? Where are they getting their thoughts? Who do they follow? And then you hey, really, really quick on that. Yeah. There's a lot of people that talk to me about Glassdoor. Yeah. Here's why Glassdoor is important, guys. Who's on Glassdoor? The employees. Uh, yeah, the employees are on Glassdoor. If you want to get a good idea of what a company's like to work with, their employees are going to tell you uh, by the reviews on Glassdoor. So it's and really, the really important. And Glassdoor also gives people the opportunity to say how much they approve of the CEO. Mm -hmm. And so if you see somebody below 50%, or if you see somebody with one really bad review and then five or six really five-star, 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 that's somebody who's managing their reviews. And it's just like finding a condo to rent on VRBO. You have to read the reviews not only for what's said, but for what's not said, right? To get a feel for what's going on in the business. But I also want to make sure that you search the news to find changes. So if you're an MSP owner, when is the number one time most MSPs contracts are at risk? When there's a management change, yep. right? 
So you want to know if they've been acquired. You want to know if they acquired somebody else. You want to know if they changed suppliers. You want to know if they landed a big deal. All of these kinds of things impact the trajectory of a business. And it's at those moments in time when they're ripe to make a change. Okay. So you want to know what's going on in the business. You also want to search for key business relationships. Um, there are some of those open corporate wiki websites you can go to and you can find out if somebody owns a business, who's on their board of directors, who's on their management team, what other companies are they involved in, right? And again, this lets you get a much deeper, richer picture of who you're dealing with and who you know in common. So Chris, it's a really small world out there, right? Once you're a business owner, the world gets really small. Especially in your local area, depending on how big your company is and how big your city is, really small. So, so the odds are that if you do this research, you're going to find some points of commonality. And that's really good because then you can call your friends up and say, hey, you know this guy, you know this gal? What's up with their business? What have you been hearing, right? And you can go into a first-time appointment, not cold, but prepared. Now, when we go into the first time appointment, I want to break down what happens. And we recommend that your first time appointment is 15 minutes. I want you to write that down. If you're taking notes, 15 minutes, put a big circle around it. And here's why managing your time is so important in a first time appointment. Nobody gets married on the first date. First time appointments are only about making sure that you have a values fit and a reason to meet again. Okay. So here's how we break down that 15 minutes. First, you have a brief opening, right? Second, you're going to ask them three big questions. Third, you're going to share a why that leads to a shared bond of competence. And then fourth, you're going to lay down why you're different, why you're better. And I call that your value hook. And your value hook is designed to make people want to know more about you and your company. And the reason we close with your value hook is because right after that, you're going to ask for the next step. And that's going to be a 45 minute discovery call. So we lay down the value hook last because they're going to want to know more. And yeah, let's get together and talk again. Okay. So the number one most important thing is managing that 15 minute window of time. When you prove in your first call that you can manage time and stick to 15 minutes, the respect level goes way up, right? Now, what is a business owner going to try to do? When you go through this process, first of all, you're going to go through this process. And I'm going to teach this to you today uh, and it's going to seem natural, but you're going to have to practice, but it's going to be natural. But if you let somebody take you off your game and out of your steps, what you're going to find out is time gets away from you and it gets too long. And the next thing you know, you're going to be talking price too early in yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Now, Cindy, one of the things that I absolutely see MSPs do when they when we start to talk about this, especially when we're at our live events and we mention, do your first 15 minute meeting there, you start to see them get a little cross eyed and they're like, I need to be able to do my assessment right away. I need to be able to do this. Slow down. It's okay. And, and, and one thing that we absolutely do in this program, we see a lot of our partners doing this first fun time appointment, the FTA. 15 minute appointment as a remote call, a zoom or a team's call, because that's how you scale it guys. It's okay to do that. You're the one that controls that process. I know we always did it in person. I know we always had to have time for that, but you know what, Cindy, we say this a lot. Times have changed. People are very okay with being remote. Seven figure MSP is a 100% worldwide company. We are a 100% remote company other than our live events. All of our sales, other than our live events, which are very coordinated, structured, and orchestrated, all of our sales is 100% remote. Nobody complains about that because they're used to it. We dictate the process. It's okay for you to do that too. Now, when we manage our time well, when we go through these steps, here's what happens. First of all, we build rapport. Second, we qualify the prospect. So you're not spending time with people who don't fit your ideal screen and with people who aren't financially qualified. Third, we help you turn on their risk light bulb so they are preconditioned. Before you have more than 15 minutes in the relationship, they're preconditioned 
to want to hear what you have to say. Okay. We're also going to create des desire in them. And the way we create desire is with our value hook and with the way we handle our time and set up the next meeting. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So let's see exactly how that works. So we're going to do the open. We're going to find common ground. Why is common ground so important? We're looking for shared purpose and shared values. We're looking to build trust. And we're also using this common ground as sort of the cornerstone of our relationship. That's what we're building everything else on. If you can't get common ground, if you don't have shared purpose and shared values, how likely is it that you can be in a three-year relationship with someone and have it go well? How likely is that? Not very. So how do you develop common ground? Here's what you do. Number one, you're going to limit the number of questions you ask. You don't need to know everything about them in the first 15 minutes. Second, you're going to listen more than you speak. And third, you're going to know what your next step is, the discovery call, and you're going to ask for it. So there's never going to be any confusion in the mind of the prospect or in your mind about where we are in our process. So here's an example of the open. Thank you for taking time to meet with me today. We're here because we have something in common. We both want to grow our businesses. We both want to learn more about each other's business. Whatever it is, we've got something in common. Here's what it is. So let's take the next 15 to 20 minutes and find out if it makes sense for us to work together. Does that sound okay? Think of how structured that is. Guys, this, is a per this has a purpose. This is a plan. It's a process. Run the play. That's what this is all about. Now, here's the first key. We don't talk first. Would you share a little bit about your business, what you do, why it's important to you, and where you're taking your business? Now, why is this so important? Number one, we want them to talk first. Number two, we really do want to know what they do and why it's important to them right? If somebody's business isn't important to them, are they going to be a great client? No. They've got to be motivated and they've got to have a direction. They've got to know where they're taking their business. And so do you. So let's give them the opportunity to first tell you about their business and their goals. Ask the question and listen very carefully. Now, here's your reply. We're in the technology business. We target whatever your industry vertical is. We target these types of businesses. For example, we're in the technology business and we target firms with at least $2 million in revenue and 20 employees that are within 10 miles of our office. That's a geography play. Or we're in the technology business. We target manufacturing companies that sell bits and bobs to larger manufacturing companies or we target manufacturing companies that use one of these three pieces of software whatever it is how specific it can get this is who we target this is who we do business right and the biggest reason people do business with us is and you know what the reason is now here's the thing the reason people do business with you today may not be why you want people to do business with you in the future so it's okay to be a little aspirational here with why people do business with you, particularly if you are running the play to pivot your business to more of a cyber security or security first footing. So for example, we're in the security business. We target firms with $2 million in annual sales and 20 people, and we help them have the right technology to move their business forward while keeping it as safe as possible. And the biggest reason people do business with us is because we tell them the ugly truth about what's really going on in the world. Now, look at that. I just have prepaved the fact that I'm going to tell you some things you're not going to like. But there are people out there who want to manage their risk, who want to be told what's really going on. And Chris, we had a perfect example of that in Nashville when Special Agent Andre Edwards from the Nashville office told our audience that Nashville, a smaller city in the U.S., will not help a business owner that's been hit by a cyber attack 
unless their loss is more than a million dollars. Now think about that for a minute. There's so much crime going on right now. They won't even touch it. They won't even pick up the phone unless it's more than a million dollars, right? And most people just assume we'll call the FBI and things are going to be fine. We'll get our money yeah, back. They're going to take care of me. Right. This is why we educate on the front side. Cindy, exactly. um, I want to do a timeout as soon as you're done with this slide. So just let me know when you're done because okay, I got great. a timeout time. So yeah. here's the thing. After I've told you why we're in business, I want to know from my prospect, what's the biggest reason people do business with you? If they don't know or if they won't share, that's a problem. Because here early on in this first 15 minute appointment, I want to know what makes them tick. I want to know what makes their business tick. So Chris, back to you. Back to you, Bob. No, <laughs> I love this. So I want everybody's watching this. I want you both live and yes, this is being recorded. Somebody just asked that. Um, there's a process here and there's a plan and there's structure. And you see how important this is. Think about how this relates back to your current sales process or lack of one and think about how important this is. A lot of people come in here and say, how do you get the $300 a seat? Or how do you get the 350 or $400 a seat? Blah, blah, blah. Laying the groundwork, <laughs> running the play, <laughs> running the play is so key. Okay. But quick, I'm going to time out because we have our first entry window for our two $100 Amazon gift cards. Uh, if you're live with us, here's what you do. Go to drawing.sevenfiguremsp.com. Drawing, D-R-A-W-I-N-G dot sevenfiguremsp.com. You should see it on the bottom of the screen. Go ahead and fill that out and it's gonna start to populate. At the end, we're going to choose people to win. Two Amazon gift cards, you gotta be signing here to be present to win, okay? Okay, all Continue. right. Continue. So we've opened, right? Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to ask three big questions. We need to qualify, okay? Now, there are a hundred questions you could ask. Clear your mind. The big questions are important because we're going to qualify the prospect. We're going to understand if they meet your basic requirements, and we're going to uncover the biggest showstoppers to moving forward. So what you need to do is ask the questions and then listen, and do not, under any circumstances, explain why you are asking. Okay. I want to be very clear about that. And you use the answers to move into deeper questions. So here's some examples. You're going to transition to asking them questions. Remember the last thing we did, we asked them, why do people do business with you? Well, thanks for sharing that about your business. I have three quick questions to ask you about your business as it relates to security and technology. Now, what am I doing here? I'm narrowing the field of discussion and I am focusing them very clearly on three quick questions. I'm not asking for a dissertation. I'm going to ask three quick questions. These are qualifiers. Do you have cyber insurance? When was your last security review? And who's managing your technology today? How's that working for you? Now, I want you to look at these questions in order and why we ask them this way. Number one, if they don't have cyber insurance, that tells me something about where they are in understanding how the world works and what their risks are. Chris, what would you say to a business owner that has zero cyber insurance? They, well, first of all, we have to educate them when that comes up. But the bottom line is, if you think about it, if you have zero cyber insurance, it is a ticking time bomb because they just assume banks are going to cover me or maybe insurance are going to cover me. The amount of business owners that I have met that fully believe that, and this is a United States thing, the FDIC, which is bank insurance, covers their loss of a hack is mind blowing. Right. Now, they, the reason, and the reason we ask this question is to see where they are in the maturity, mm -hmm. in their mind maturity of what's really going on and whether or not they understand how much the world has changed and moved in a different direction. Second question we ask, when was your last security review? Now I'm getting really specific here. I'm not saying cybersecurity. I'm saying security because that's a broader topic on mm -hmm. purpose. And I want to know when their last security review was. And you know the answer to that, right? The answer to that's going to be, what's that, right? Important phrasing there. Not only not your last cybersecurity review, but also not when was your last network assessment. Right. 
Okay, really important that we specifically state the proper language. Exactly. And once we know those two things about the insurance and about their last security review, we now know how serious they're taking the current worldview, how things are happening in the world. So when we ask the final question of who's managing your technology today, we already know the answer to whether or not the person managing that technology is on the leading edge of what's going on in our industry or not, right? So by this time, I now, when I ask this third question, probably four minutes into the call, I know whether or not I can take these guys as a client. And if they tell me, no, we do it ourselves, or no, we don't need this, or no, we don't need that, they're sending me clear, powerful red flags that they may not be an ideal client. Or they may be someone that I need to nurture up so that they understand the issues before I go in and spend more time with them. Okay. So remember when we qualify people, I'm not saying you throw them out the door. If they don't meet the screen initially, you put them on nurture, you bring them along, but certainly there's no reason why there's a house on fire here. If, if they, if you're getting red flags. Okay. So now we move from there into the shared. Why, why are these questions important? What do we want to do with this? Pain and motivation are important. No pain, no motivation, nothing happens. So you've got to know how motivated they are to really do something about their business and whether or not they have sufficient pain to drive change. And you've got to know that. How do you know that? So you've got to develop the pain by asking questions you probably haven't asked before. So Chris, it's been my observation in our client community and in MSPs as a whole, and I've been working in this industry now for 10, more than 10 years. We're a very polite group of people. Mm -hmm. Too polite. We don't like to put people on the spot. Yep. Okay? We're going to have to get better at being more transparent and open in our communications. So three times you ask somebody, how does this impact the business? How does this impact you? And what happens if it never changes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now those three questions, the last two, we almost never ask. And the reason these last two questions are so important is because we're tying an external situation to a person and to a deeper motivation. So what happens to you if this happens? Oh, gee, I might not get my bonus. I might lose my job. I might have to close the company. Well, that sounds pretty important, right? And what happens if you never change how you're doing things? Where do you think this is going to go? Same place, it always was, same place it always was, right? Yeah, you do what you always did. You're going to get what you always got, right? Now, I'm going to be really fair about that. Sometimes we do what we always did because it got us what we wanted. In your business right now, you might be sitting on a beautiful little business thinking, you know what? I've done what I've always done. I've got what I've always got, and I'm super happy. But there will come a point in your life where that changes and where you want more. And there's nothing wrong with that. Kids get older, they got to go to college, everything gets more expensive, um, parents get ill, need to be put somewhere where it costs you $10,000 a month, you got to make changes, things happen, and we have to respond to that, right? So listen more than you speak when you ask these questions, <clears throat> don't shy away from asking the questions that develop the pain and the motivation. And you think so, about, you held that book up before. Right. The Chris Voss book. And one yep. of the things that Chris, Chris and I were sitting on stage a couple of weeks ago, and we walked through our, some of our pivot questions that we did. And I was so, so proud to see Chris respond to some of our pivot questions. Because uh, one of the questions that we ask is, how do you want to manage your risk? And he said, man, that's a great question. You ask that question and you do what? Remember what he said, Cindy? Yeah, at least we go quiet. What did he say? I forgot. He said, shut up. Yeah, yeah. Listen yeah. more than you speak. You have it right there. The IT guy, yep, 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 yep. I'm going to, I'm smarter than you, so I'm going to talk you under the table. That's not what's right. the, the best salespeople. They state their solutions and they, or they're specifically in the early stages like this FTA, they ask their questions and they shut up and let the client sell themselves. Well, and the other thing I want to be really clear at in this first time appointment, we are not solving any problems. You don't tell people, oh, all we have to do is X, Y, Z. 
and we can we can resolve the situation. No, 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 no. We do not solve problems in the first time appointment. Okay, no way, no how, never. Guess what, okay. Cindy? Time out time again. Time out time. Time Let's go for it. All right. Second, second open window for the live drawing. We're giving away two $100 Amazon gift cards at the end of this. Drawing.sevenfiguremsp.com. Make sure you fill that out. If you're here with us, uh, you can see it on screen. Drawing.sevenfiguremsp.com. Go ahead, Cindy. Okay. All right. So now let's do an example of how we do this. So I love this question. How does technology help you achieve your goals? We find most businesses can't function without properly without technology. How does technology help you achieve your goals? Ask that question to the business owner. They ought to be able to answer it. Then you bridge to this idea that things have changed. How concerned are you about cyber attacks? Find out if they're concerned. You know why we focus on security? Did you know that small and mid-sized businesses are targeted by criminals? for cyber attacks. Let me tell you a couple of stories. And then what you do here is you start telling stories about businesses that you know were attacked. Now, recently, between the last time I did this presentation and this one, I went out into our client Facebook group and I asked this question on a Facebook post. I said, tell me about a time where you knew a business that got attacked. I wanted a first person story on what got attacked. And oh my God, the things that came back would make your hair curl. I mean, it was just unbelievable how bad they were. You have stories like this. I know you know stories like this. Tell your stories. Tell your stories so that people understand this is happening. So let me just ask you a quick question. If you're a business owner and you get attacked, are you going to tell anybody? No, you're not. That's why people don't understand how bad it is. We owe it to the community at large to get the word out so they know that they need to take action. And what we do is we pivot from telling the story to saying, what would happen to your business if you had to run with, without any technology? What would happen? And what would happen if your business bank account was drained? They, you know, the thing that's scary is they think a lot of people think that that's just not possible. So your job, guys, is to educate them through this whole thing, how real the threats are. Exactly. Exactly. And they're really out there. I mean, um, if you haven't been out to the FBI ICS page lately, go out there and read their latest report. Again, it's going to tell you what's going on in the real world, and it's huge. Okay. So now we're going to go to step four and we're going to go to your value hook, why you matter. Now, remember, this is only a 15 minute call. So fewer words are stronger than more words. Your value hook is super important because it differentiates you from the first conversation. You build in an automatic reason to not be the cheapest provider. Okay. From the get go. We're not the cheapest people in town and we know it and we're okay with it. More importantly, so are our clients. It gives you and your team a reason to be proud of what you do and to reject prospects that don't share your core values early in the sales process. Okay. Now, here's how you develop your value. Hook. You need to have three stories that you tell about how you do your work. And distill it down to your why, why you run your shop the way you do, what you stand for, what you will not tolerate. And what it does is it makes you much more approachable as a business because it makes people want to do business with you. So how you make a difference, your signature story is a headline story about how your business makes a difference. So answer this question. Tell me about a time when your business saved a client. If you can tell me about a time when your business saved a client, there's a signature story in there. The headline tells what your business stands for, why it matters to you, and what it means to your clients. What you stand against is a headline story that tells your business, tells about what your business will not tolerate and why that matters for you and your team. 
And then the last is you just distill it down as to what you're all about. So Chris, um, I'm going to just take this and just do a quickie example. Now mm -hmm. this is totally on the fly. Chris has never heard this before. We're just kind of, what do I call it? Jazz improvisational here, right? So here's the thing. Let me tell you about a signature story, a story about how seven figure MSP made a difference. We had a client that came into the program and their business wasn't cash flow positive. And the last investment they thought we could make would be to come into our program and try to learn how to sell. 18 months later, they had doubled their top line, um, their top line revenue and they had tripled their profit. And the reason that's so important to us as a team is because we saw what a difference it made in the life of that business owner and to his technicians. And we saw a business go from zero MRR to 35K in MRR. And we saw what a difference it made when people were not constantly worried about whether or not they were bringing in enough money that month to cover payroll. And that makes us really happy because that's what we love to do. Okay, what we stand against, we have a very clear no jerks policy. Chris jokes about it, that there are no jerks in our so ecosystem. I'm getting kicked out. <laughs> yeah, and the reason that matters to us so much is it means that the people on our team are willing to take a call. They're willing to meet with anyone at any time because they know they're gonna be treated with respect. It means that we're willing to talk about difficult situations because we're always working the problem. We're not being accusatory with each other. And it also means that inside our team, we openly communicate about things that we do well, things that we need to improve on. And we're not afraid to own our mistakes because we know that nobody bats a thousand. We all get up to the plate, do our dead level best, and we adjust, we grow, and we move forward. And that's the kind of culture we have. And that's the kind of company we have. And so if that sounds like the kind of company you want to work with, Maybe it's time for us to take the next step and have a deeper conversation about how you use technology in your business. Now, right there, I just gave you an example. Even though I was telling hook stories about, about our company, about Seven Figure MSP, I kind of shifted gears on you there for a minute and showed how I transitioned from my story right back into, does it make sense for us to meet and talk? You literally you? baited me into that. Like I was, I, was, I was here sitting ready for it. <laughs> so and I wasn't even like, I didn't realize what you're doing and you got me. So, right. That's so, how good it is. but now, but so here's the thing. Did you notice that I really leaned into our values? Did you notice that I really didn't talk in detail? I didn't mention any software. I didn't mention any hardware. I didn't mention any hours of support. I didn't mention anything complicated, but what I did was I came from the heart and I really talked about what made us different right now. Every business owner has core values. Sometimes you don't admit what they are, but you've got them, baby, or you wouldn't be where you are today, right? So when you start developing these signature stories, you make the 15-minute appointment come alive because you're talking about what makes you different, what makes you unique, and what makes people want to do business with you. And you're sharing that in a very open way so that people can retain their autonomy. That was a big thing Chris Voss talked about two weeks ago. People will do will die before they give up their autonomy. Well, listen, when you lead with your values, the clients that you work with are drawn, are magnetically drawn to you and are sticky to you because of shared values. And that's what we really want. We really want shared values because that transitions into a shared bond of competence. And when things go bad, you want to be working with clients that are reasonable, right? So here's an example. How do we make a difference? We saved uh, a, a $10 million firm. Uh, we saved a firm $10 million last year when they were compromised. We executed the fastest path to recovery and the insurance company congratulated us on our processes and our professionalism, right? We're a security first firm. We do not compromise when it comes to our technical prescription. We have in the past, and we learned that doesn't serve anyone well. We learned from our mistakes, right? So what am I doing here with these two stories? One, I'm leading with the benefit, right? I'm leading with the, hey, we saved somebody, and we got external verification that we did a good thing. And two, here's our value. We're security first, and we do not compromise. 
So I'm telling you up front before we even get anywhere more than 15 minutes into the relationship that I have things that I do not compromise on. And this is super important because we've all got clients who have tried to tell us how to do our job. And I respect, respectfully submit that those days, my friends, are over, right? You do not let the client tell you what to do. Then another thing, we hire the best, so we don't expect accept disrespect in any form. Our people are our greatest strength, right? And getting that out on the table is super empowering for your team, for your team to know that you do that. And that message alone will repel jerks, right? And when you distill it down and say, we're not the cheapest provider in town, we respect that you have choices in who you do business with. We help our clients achieve their goals with secure, reliable technology and white glove service. That's what we're about. Now, that may not be what you're about, right? This is just an example. But if this is what you are about, then claim it and say it. Because the minute I say I'm not the cheapest provider in town, the people who want the low cost experience are going to self-select out. And I want that. And think about how important it is to avoid wasting that time. I and got 15 minutes into it. And that's it. A, a lot of people are so obsessed with closing every single deal. That is not what sales is all about, guys. I know it's great to close deals. I get it. I know it sucks to, to not have a prospect. But you know what, what sucks the worst? Going through hours and hours of discovery, getting into, even if you're doing your old school network assessment, going through all of this and then getting to the table and realizing you could have disqualified them in five minutes because they're a cheap pain in the ass. That's right. That's the worst thing that could ever happen. And, and the thing of it is when you deal with a business owner and you have this kind of structure in your first time appointment, it's going to lead you to more mature companies. What you may not have always realized is that in the first time appointment, a more mature company with a higher growth potential, if you come in and say, I'll do anything for a buck, they're going to run from you. They're going to run from you because they know you don't have a long-term sustainable business model. And they're not going to want to change providers, right? They're going to want somebody that's going to grow with them, that's got the same level of maturity. They want that shared bond of competence. And that's why doing it with a system is so important, not just for you, but so that you can get the right kind of customers. So the last thing we want to do is we want to advance the sales process. So Chris, do you want to do that thing with the, uh, with the, uh, get in your entry again? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good call. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this or if you just joined us a few minutes ago, we we're giving away two $100 Amazon gift cards on today's call. This is a live broadcast only thing. So if you're live with us here, uh, current time is 1 13 PM central time. You can see there's the watch. <laughs> 1 wait, PM there's a watch? central time. Yep. There's a, there's a watch. Uh, on uh, May 31st, 2023. So you can go ahead and fill that out. Cindy, I'll let you keep going. It's drawing.sevenfigure.msp.com. We'll be drawing that prize in about 15 minutes. Okay, so now we want to advance the sales process. This is so important because everybody forgets to do this. You got to manage and set expectations and train the client that we make decisions at every meeting. Right? We make a decision. Today, we're going to make a decision about when, whether it makes sense for us to continue, right? And we're going to start building commitment to our process, and we're going to start acting like little pointy-headed project managers because we're always going to know what our next step is. So how you advance the sale is you manage time so that you can ask for the next appointment. You never leave a sales call without knowing what the next appointment is. You do not share everything you know on the first-time appointment. You manage your time and you follow your process and you never leave without booking your next step. So let me show you how that looks. Typically at this point in the conversation, we make a decision about whether or not it makes sense for us to continue the conversation. Would you like to continue with us? After our next conversation, we'd have the basic information we would need to recommend a course of action. Looks like we share values that might make sense for us, right? 
Would you be willing to meet for 45 minutes to discuss how your business works at a deeper level of detail? Now, I want you to think about that question. Would you be willing to meet for 45 minutes to discuss how your business works at a deeper level of detail? That question works because we did not get into details in the first time appointment. You see how that works? That's why it's so important that you stick to the scope of the first time appointment and you don't dive into technical stuff. You don't dive into solving problems. You don't do those things because that gives you a clear and compelling reason to meet for 45 minutes. Okay. That's why we do that. And would this day, this time work for you? Do you prefer Zoom or would you like to meet face to face? Now, pro tip, would Tuesday at 10 o'clock work for you or would you prefer Wednesday at three? right? Never say, when are you available? Never, ever say that. Right. I got this. Did time. you see that? Did you see the post, uh, in our inner circle clients group about the follow-up email last night with the specific times? I don't know if you saw that, but there was one of our, so. there was one of our members that specifically stayed. Let me see if I can find it while you're doing this. And maybe I can share my screen here because okay, that'd be cool. it, it literally stated, how important that was because they went back on a follow-up call and or a follow-up email and used that and it like pinpointed them down. So one of the things Chris always says inside our program is a confused mind always says no. The most common place people get confused is over their calendar. When you ask people, when would you like to meet? Mass confusion goes off in their mind. And the primary thing they've got is I don't have time. So when you say, Option A or option B, boom, it's super clear, right? And we can do it on Zoom or we can meet face-to-face -face your call, right? So when we go through this process, where do we turn on the, the risk light bulb? Where does the, 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 the customer say, ooh, maybe things have changed and I need to be thinking about things a little bit differently? It's when we start doing our shared why. And remember what we do in the shared why? We tell three stories about people who got hacked and had a terrible thing happen in their business, right? That's when the risk light bulb gets turned on. So let's talk about some winning steps here. Okay, hey, really quick. Can I show that? What I was yeah, talking absolutely. About? Uh, sure. give, give me one second. Sorry sure. for my dogs barking uh, because of Memorial Day week. Uh, my cleaners are here today, which is not normal, but it is what it is. Uh, really quick. Let me just show this my Chrome tab here. Here's what I was talking about. Uh, whoops. Oh yeah. Brian's call. Yeah. FTA win from last night. So exactly what we're talking about here. I have a booked cybersecurity risk assessment pitch meeting booked for Thursday, little 13 user lab and dentist recruiter business. The conversation was left without a second meeting booked. The owner is very excited about our services due to time constraints. As recommended, I sent a follow-up email and suggested two dates and times. That follow-up email is really killing it for solidifying my follow-up meetings in the sales process. Exactly. So absolutely key, right? So key. Exactly. Right. And, and look at what Brian did. The fact that he didn't have time to set the appointment at the end of the first time appointment. Or he forgot or like stuff happens, that, right? That didn't take him off of his plan. Yep. And that's super important. And that kind of brings me back to this point I've got here. Don't script things. you got to roll with the flow. You've got to collect your thoughts. You've got to have a plan. But you want to be authentic. And people can smell scripts a mile off. I don't know what it is about scripting that people can smell and they have such a massive aversion to. But that's why I don't script things, right? Be the best version of you. You've got colloquialisms, you've got a pattern of speech, you've got things that you do. Keep the things that make you you because nobody else can be the best version of you. And that's what it's all about. And that means you're going to have to silence your own negative self-talk or your doubts because you never know where a conversation will lead or what kind of results it will bring. And let me give you an example. They don't have cyber insurance. They don't need technology. They don't want what you offer. But you know what? Their brother-in-law has a company that could really use your help. How are you going to find that out if you don't talk, if you don't go on the call? You never know where the introductions are going to go. And remember, the way we have framed this whole first-time appointment is 
I, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better, let you get to know me a little bit better, see if there are any common ground for us to work together. And if not, it's always good to meet another business owner and understand who I can refer to you, right? Be that guy. Practice, 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 practice. Now, practicing requires a mindset. So I just wanted to talk about practice for just a minute. Has anybody ever heard the old adage, you practice like you play? right? You play like you practice. You guys have heard this before. Mm -hmm. If you go into every first time appointment choked up like it's death or win, right? That doesn't serve you well. Your negative self-talk is going to take off and own your ass. What you want to do instead is you want to, you want to look at a first time appointment like a conversation. So Chris, yesterday in one of our coaching calls, we had a longtime client tell us that uh, through a weird set of circumstances, they've now discovered that their first time appointment is for a 130 seat opportunity. Wow. And because it's a 130 seat opportunity, what's the first thing that happens? They want to win so bad. Lizard brain takes over. Lizard brain takes over. You forget about your process. Now, this gentleman is highly skilled and I'm sure that he's going to follow the process. But it was a real eye opener for me to see how deep the desire for the win was, right? So if you find yourself in that situation where you're going in and it's clear you're not the preferred provider, it's clear that they're bringing you in because they want to get three bids or whatever, you still have to stick to your process because it's the sticking to your process that is going to differentiate you enough for the win, right? Because what's this client doing? They're probably running their own um, purchasing process, trying to find the lowest cost bidder. And we know that lowest cost bidder business is not what we want because we can't build a strong, thriving company with that. You're not a Walmart. Just admit it, right? Nor do you want to be. Exactly. Exactly. And don't let people push you down in that terrible quadrant where you can't make the money you need to make to have the kind of company and the kind of life that you want. So you've got to practice. And when you go to first time appointments, you really have to lean into the practice concept and methodology. Yeah. One other thing I'll so, say on that, you, you just said something very key. Notice guys that Cindy said, if you do it this way, you won't make the type of money and the kind of life that you want. It's perfectly okay to make a profit on a product. Now, I'm not saying rip people off. I'm not saying scam people, but it is acceptable to provide a really good product and get paid really well. That is okay. And for some reason in this industry, there's this taboo around, I'm going to charge a good margin. When we talk about a good margin, we recommend an 80% gross margin. It's your best in class numbers. That's what you should be charging for your services. That does not mean you're ripping your people off. Because I promise you, the hackers are coming in some capacity. We got software in the mix, AKA, Andre Edwards said this, and it was really such a great statement. He talked about software. That's your people. You got people in the mix. And when the hackers hit, all of the nice guy stuff, Cindy, you compare this to your fender bender on the street. Oh, yeah. Like everybody in the first five minutes of an accident is like, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Whose fault is it? That's immediately where it's going to go. We're talking about taking risk, working with your client, sharing in that risk, sharing in that competence, because gross negligence is going to be the one that runs the day on these types of deals moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, listen, Chris, that pretty much takes us down to the end of what I had planned to share for today. And I guess just to kind of open things up in the chat, if you've taken something away, something out of this that is really important to you, and you're going to do something different, what are you going to do on your next first time appointment? I would love to get some feedback. If you've learned something today, your biggest takeaway, what are you going to take into your next first time appointment? That would just And while you guys put that in the comments, you can put that in any comment section of any platform that you're watching on. So if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on LinkedIn, if you're watching on YouTube, put that in the comment. What's 
What's one thing that you took out of today's presentation with Cindy that you can do on your next first time appointment? In the meantime, while we get ready to review those, I'm going to put our drawing back up. We're going to be in a, in a couple of minutes here. In fact, I'm going to set my timer here for four minutes, Cindy. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to review some of these. Let me just set my timer for four minutes and zero seconds here. So I'm really thrilled, Chris. There's some great things coming in in the chat. And just to kind of hit one of those, oh, he's got the timer going, guys. In fact, I'm going to come back to, oops, I screwed up the timer already. There we go. Timer's going. Um, I'm going to come back to us right here. And then I'm going to bring some of these comments up here. So uh, I got a couple of them. Actually, this is my favorite. You guys are amazing. I, that's my that's my favorite one. Um, oh, it just made my day, man. Here's really one from, nice. from Facebook user. We just can't see who that is specifically because uh, you, you have to authenticate with StreamYard, which we're using here. But that's one. Um, I think that's a really good one. Here's another one from Jonathan Hudnall. I've been nervous to meet with my first client that isn't a friend or someone already in that keeps structure. And so this helps keep structure and sell any comments on that one, Cindy. And don't forget. Yeah, we got so so for minutes, me, structure, structure always helps me when I'm nervous and a little side note, I'm always nervous when Chris and I do these things. So that's why I really have to stick to my structure, right? Structure, well, but, but structure gives you a really good way that, because mentally we got distractions, we got stuff going on. Sometimes we get off track. Sometimes you lose your train of thought, whatever. Boom, right back. Boom, right back, right? Yeah, structure wins, right? Okay. Yep. Really okay. Got a couple more. Here's another one. Limit my time to 15 minutes. Uh, before I bring up any more here really quick, don't forget Amazon gift cards. Drawing that seven figure MSP.com. We're going to drive this, draw this live in Two, Two minutes, minutes and 20 24 minutes. seconds. <laughs> I, I love how he's doing these drawings. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually something that we added a couple of weeks ago. Here's another one from Brian Judry. Uh, the hardest thing is try not to fix stuff. I, Brian, you're spot on because we're all we're all IT guys. So you, you want to get in there. This is actually, I think, a huge reason why making it a Zoom or a Teams meeting and remote. It's super important. And actually, one of the things that we do, Cindy, I showed you our bullet point sales uh, script that we use for our sales side, right? For for the seven figure MSP side, right? Um, so one of the things that I actively do with our sales team is I have them do a Zoom. We do this rapport, and we determine in that first few minutes. Now we usually have a single call because we're remote, that kind of thing. But we determine right away whether they're a fit for us, and. If not, we go to a value call is what we do. So it's a little bit different, but it's the same thing. But like Brian said here, I need to focus on what's important and stop trying to be the tech out of the gate. I think that is a critical piece, Brian. And the fact that you realize that here is a winner. Absolutely. Oh, guess what, Cindy? What? Drawing. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to draw. Hey, listen, <laughs> not quite yet. We got one minute left. You get this $100 gift card. The question is, are you going to spend it immediately? Come on, guys. Or are you going to wait? There's nobody, until... signing up for this. There's nobody signing up for this thing today. This is like, oh, we, got, we got some so people. Wait, not, wait. Not Everybody's the number that we should be looking at right now. Nobody's signing up. That means you could really win it. Yes. Right? Okay, so here's a couple more. Um, this is from Melanie. Listen more than I speak. That's a really good one, Melanie. I like that. Melanie's one of our clients. I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, here's another one. Uh, 15 minute first meeting and follow appointment and control the dates and outcome. I think that's really good as well. Absolutely. Um, and Melanie, I'm not going to comment on this. I'm just going to let you be Walmart if that's who you want to be. <laughs> I love that. So uh, actually what's cool about Melanie, Melanie came from the insurance industry. So she's been on our, our onboarding calls and talking about how relevant our language all is and how this industry has changed and how it's actually really turning into kind of the insurance industry and how all those things kind of go together. Right. And of course, you know, you could see that easily with some of our dear friends that have moved into that kind of place. Okay. Timer just went off, Cindy. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, Melanie also said, I ain't the cheapest girl in town. <laughs> Listen, when, when all else fails, order the I love it. Uh, here's my last one. Uh, I still find myself falling back to what tools I use slowly moving forward, focusing on the risk and security. Really important stuff. And you guys can see how critical it is to be focusing on these different things. So, Cindy, uh, one last thing before you guys go here. We got a couple minutes left. 
we're giving away. I'm, I'm literally going to close this. The timer just went off. We are only like five entries today. We had 30, okay, well, 30 yeah, plus last week. I don't know what's going on, but you guys you are have a great shot to win. Yeah. Right. But I'm going to close this in a second here. Let me just get this populated. This is so this sign is up so right cool. now. If you're, if you're wanting to get in, okay, I'm going to populate my, uh, here we go. One second. I got to link up my spreadsheet. <laughs> Jonathan says, cut it off and pick my name. <laughs> It's, Wait, coming, Jonathan, buddy. it's until, coming, buddy. You, until you see, you see how this goes. Um, part of the reason we're doing this is so everybody understands it's a live drawing, it's a live presentation, and and there's no you know juking the stats to pull a winner, right? Boom, here's the winner. I mean, we literally have minimal names today, so I'm disappointed. Oh, too bad. We got it is what it is. Okay. Watching Hold on, on one second. I'm going to present my screen here. Bummer. Bummer. Uh, one second. Okay, here we go. This is live. See, I'm loving this. Yeah, so gonna it's either going to be Nick or Dada or Rocky or Frank or Sam, Samuel. Yeah, I mean, we got five so we know, man. Look here comes our it. spin. And we, can, we go. The winner, actually, sorry, the winner gets a can of Prego. Here we go. Samuel Sargent. Oh, my God. All this right. is amazing. Our number one. Uh, good part of a this is so Samuel, cool. Samuel Sargent. Samuel, do me a favor. I'm going to put up a get ready and I'm going to send you a place to email that. Okay. Second one. So that pulled, what's cool about this is it pulls Samuel out of there. Now I can spin again. Awesome. Here's winner number two is data. Looks like. Data Academy. Here we go. All right. This data is Academy is our second winner. Congratulations, data. That is a, I don't know, can you guys hear the sound? That's it's even does like clapping and stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. So Jonathan <laughs> says, oh, it didn't pull us in from last time. I don't know no. what last time meant. It's meaning last time, last time. No. Oh, no. no. You have to register every you time. You register every time, time, guys. Sorry. Yeah. That, that sounds like a you problem. Oh, well, okay. Well, there you go. Maybe there, you know, anyway, there might be some no. kind of hiccup, but Jonathan. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it pulled in everything. I don't know, but I'll check on it either way. Maybe it's only new people. I'll have to see if Amanda can fix that. Actually, that might have been it. Um, yeah. But I'll I'll have a man to check it and we'll get it fixed for you guys if that's the case. I don't know. But so some people are saying they registered again, but it didn't pull my name. So okay. Maybe that's because you were here last time and I'll have a man to fix that. Either way, we got two new people that are great. Uh and Cindy, great job today. It's really good hey, to see you. Very excited about everything that we did. Um, we're gonna be back next week. What are we talking about next week? Uh next week we're talking about how to handle sales objections. Woohoo! I'm looking forward to that. I'm very excited about that. That's probably our biggest one that we like to go over yeah. uh, is handling sales objections, both during your 15 minute first time appointment, all the way through your discovery, all the way through selling the cybersecurity risk assessment, all the way through handling the managed services sale itself. Um, if you did win today, uh, please email info at sevenfiguremsp.com and we will get your gift cards out to you. And I will make sure that bug, whatever that bug is, if that's there, I'll get that fixed for next week and we'll go from there. Uh, a couple people said they registered. Uh, so I bet you it just didn't pull in. Might be a bug on it. So we'll get that fixed. But either way, uh, we'll go from there. And Cindy Phillips, great job today. We'll see you next week to talk about handling MSP sales objections. You guys have a great week. For, Chris, for Cindy Phillips, I'm Chris Weiser. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.